As a YouTuber, I'm always looking for opportunities to shoot either content for my videos or B-roll footage. And thankfully, many of the smartphones today can create amazing looking videos. And we all carry these portable electronics in our pockets anyway. So if you are a part-time YouTuber or a full-time YouTuber or even a hobbyist, you have the ability to create awesome looking videos with these tools. And in this video, I want to share with you five different tips that you can use to create better smartphone videos for your YouTube channel. ISD from It Makes Sense, where we give you the tools, the tips, and the strategies so you can start a YouTube business. And today I wanna to talk about the different tips to shoot videos with your phone. Now, I'm shooting this entire video with my iPhone 11, but you can apply these same principles with any smartphone. And let me just also say that I am no Peter McKinnon. The guy is absolutely amazing. He's an amazing photographer and videographer. But I just want to share with you five different things that I have learned along my YouTube journey. And these are mistakes that I've made and things that I've learned. And I just want to share them with you. So let's start with tip number one. And that is to lock your autofocus as well as your exposure. One of the mistakes that I made when I first started my YouTube channel, especially when I was using my phone, was my white balance and my exposure was constantly changing because I didn't lock it in. So in one shot you would see the clouds in the sky and in another they would be white because the exposure was constantly changing because I didn't lock it in. And as someone pointed out in one of my comments, you could tell that I was an amateur because my white balance and my exposure kept changing throughout the video. So on the iPhone, you just click on the area where you want to focus and then click and hold and that will lock the exposure and the focus. So no matter where you point the camera, if you move it around, your exposure will not be changing. And if you stay to the end of this video, I will show you an app that you can use to take this a step further and make this really easy. All right, tip number two is to stabilize your camera while you're filming with either a handheld tripod or a handheld jib. So again, in some of my first videos, I was holding my phone in my hand while I was filming or I was vlogging and the camera would shake and people would complain to me, especially my kids, that I would give them a headache because of all the shaking going on and they were just getting eye strain watching my videos. Now I use this handheld Joby stand that I carry with me if I'm going to film. Or I have this cheap handheld boom that I can use. And what's really great about this too is I can connect my microphone and my light. And this is exactly the setup I'm using right now while filming this video. And both of these also really help if I want to do any type of cinematic shot like a panning shot or a motion shot or even a time lapse shot. It just gives your videos a little more of a professional feel. And I'll leave links down below where you can go check out the current prices of the handheld tripod as well as the handheld rig that I use. All right, tip number three is to make sure you hold the camera in the horizontal position. Now this is unless you want to do a video for like TikTok or Instagram stories, so make sure you attach the camera in the horizontal position. So if you're gonna attach it to a handheld rig or a, any type of stabilizing device, make sure that it's in the horizontal position. I already thought of another reason why it might be acceptable to hold it vertically, and that is if you're doing golf shots. But other than that, make sure you hold it horizontally. Hey, if you're getting value from this video, please hit that thumbs up and leave me a comment down below and let me know any of your tips that you have for shooting great video on your phone. All right, tip number four is to make sure that you have great lighting for your videos. Now, if you are shooting outside, you want to make sure that the light is coming from behind you and not directly in front of you. Otherwise, you'll get this horrible looking glare. So when you're outside, try avoid shooting directly at the sunlight. That is unless you're going for a certain cinematic effect like during either sunrise or sunset. But during midday like this shot, I don't think there is any cinematic quality. It was just me forgetting that I was pointing the camera directly at the sun during midday. So if you're filming on the inside, the natural light coming from a window will probably be just fine. 
you're in a dark basement office like me, then you're gonna need some sort of lighting like this, or, but if you really want to improve the quality of your videos, then you might want to consider investing in either a ring light or an LED light or some surrounding lights to give your video a little more pop. And I did a full review on the lights that I use and I will leave that in the card above. Tip number five is to have a subject in your video, whether it be a pet or a person, something that can connect with your audience. All right, so how many times have you been to a beautiful place and you wanted to capture that on video? So you whip out your phone, you start filming and you do the pan that everyone does and then you take it home and you show it to someone that wasn't there and you're all excited and they look at it and they're just like, yeah, that looks nice. And as we all know, cameras can't really capture that magical moment. But one of the things we can do is add a subject to that video. It just makes it more interesting, it provides context, and it allows your audience to connect with that shot. Another tip is to think of the rule of thirds when you're framing a shot. The rule of thirds is a concept in video and photography where you divide your frame into nine equal imaginary sections. And this creates reference points that act as a guide whenever you're filming or you're doing a photo. And the lines on this imaginary three by three grid is where our eyes are automatically drawn for to look for information. So when you put your subject along the intersection of this imaginary grid, the shot becomes more aesthetically pleasing for your viewer. So for example, look at this shot of Dexter. In this view, he's in the center of the shot and not in any intersection. But if I move it just a little, the view becomes a little more interesting to watch. Same with any video that you do. If you stay right in the middle of that grid, the shot becomes boring because our eyes become static and they're not moving around because there's no motion. And if you're using an iPhone, you can show this grid on your camera by going to settings, camera, and turn this grid on. Now you won't see this grid in the output of your film, but you will see it while you're filming so you can use it as a guide. All right, a bonus tip is tip number six, and that is to use a third-party app called Filmilleric Pro. It's an app that turns your phone into a professional DSLR type camera, and it can be used on both iPhone as well as Androids. And it typically records better quality videos than your standard camera setting. You can easily set your exposure and your white balance like we showed in the first tip. But what I also really like about this application is you can also change the frame rate, the resolution, and even though iPhones can shoot in 4K, Filmoric Pro has another setting that you can set here that'll produce really good quality videos. And I typically like to set my frame rate a little higher when I'm shooting a video because that just makes it a little easier for me to adjust when I'm editing in post. This app just really has a lot of great features that can really take your video production with a phone to the next level. And I have a full review and tutorial on this app and I will leave a link in the card above. Making great videos doesn't have to break the bank, especially if you're just getting started. All you really need is a phone. But if you wanna add some really inexpensive accessories to the mix to take your video production to that next level, then I have a video and you can go watch that right here and I will show you some really cheap but great video accessories that you can add to your smartphone. And if you don't want to watch that one, go watch this one down here. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.